Today we are getting to know new ideas for a cash pot. Or to be more precise, a flower pot case. We are getting to make it bottomless in order to avoid moldiness in case of water getting inside. The idea is not totally new. I've already seen cash ports like this. However, I felt like developing this direction and sharing the results of my research with you. A few words on some essential points. As I've already mentioned, the case is bottomless. First of all, weave an internal part of a cash port. For this part you can make use of tube remainders, since it is supposed to be hidden inside anyway. Then make a turn. It can have clear edges. It is an option I prefer, or it can be a roundish with vague transition. Well, actually this option is nice too. I've tried a few variants of a blurred transition as well. Here is one more. Moreover, if you choose making clear presets, there can be as many as three of them. Then follow the final part, woven downwards. Since it is a front side, pay attention to design pattern and joints. As for finishing, I'm going to tell you about it later. So these were the key points worth your attention. Traditionally, a few words about the tubes I work with and the way I prepare them. Currently, I prepare them like this. Well, we paper weavers are constantly experiment, so I've tried a huge number of options. I've tried both creating plasticine-like tubes with the help of a heater and simplifying the process. As a result, I've come to the following mixture. Primer, colorant, some water and much varnish. So the solution consists of primer, colorant and water, one half, and about the same amount of lacquer. I don't use a heater for drying as it is rather hot now. Instead, I'm using a piece of advice I borrowed from other weavers. I'm constantly mixing the tubes while drying to prevent them from sticking together. As a result, the tubes are rather flexible and nice to work with. Moreover, you don't necessarily have to moisten them. They remain flexible for a long time due to a big amount of lacquer. So let me repeat my own words. This is my favorite recipe for today. There is likely to be many more new recipes in the future. I'm experimenting and sharing my experience with you. Thanks a lot to those who share their experience with us. Let's get to work. First of all, you have to choose a port you are going to entwine. My trial and error have led me to the shape like this. At first I've started with such bellied ports. However, since my cash port is widening upwards, white ports like these seem to be over bellied. That's why I've chosen the highest port I had. As a result, I've got cash ports shaped like this. Well, actually, I'm quite satisfied with it, so I recommend it to you. So take a port you are going to entwine, then take a box, in my case such a small packing box is quite sufficient. 
Outline the bottom. Mark points at about 1.5 cm intervals and insert the tubes. I insert bright tubes in pairs because my shape is widening upwards. As you know, big intervals between the tubes of the base look ugly. So I'm going to separate the tubes later, that's why currently I'm inserting them doubled. One more thing, you have to decide from the very beginning whether you're going to make these ribs multicolored or of the same color. Here I've used blueberry colored tubes of the base, which has resulted in the edges of the same color. As for colorful inserts, these are just working tubes. Here I've used light blue tubes as a base, while my basic color is dark blue. Dark blue. The same goes for this item. The basic color is dark gray, while the facets are light green. Now I'm weaving a cash port to fit this one. It is going to be a set for a gift. However, this time I'd like the facets to be yellow. So I've inserted the double tubes, placed the port inside and put some additional weight into it. After which I start weaving with a basic color in the normal rope-like technique. It is where I'd like to draw your attention to the fact that the joints have to be on the front side. Well, usually we try our best to hide them between the seams or at least from the wrong side. In this particular part of weaving, try to connect the tubes on the front side, since it is supposed to be hidden afterwards. So, start weaving in a normal two-tube rope-like technique. When the intervals between the tubes become too big, divide them with the help of a barbecue skewer. The double tubes are divided, press them thoroughly and divide the next pair. Place a skewer between them. Press the working tubes downwards thoroughly in order to mask the poles and continue this way. The next stage is creating a clear edge. We are already familiar with this technique, but let me show it once again for newcomers. I don't have to moisten my plasticine tubes, they are flexible enough and they lay smoothly. This way make it turn. continue this way up to the end of the row. It is what we've got. Now weave an edge. I'm weaving the first row dark colored in order to make the contrast with an edge. Then you can create a multicolored pattern like here. The edge consists of 6-7 rows, depending on your tubes and port size, in my case it is 6-7 rows. A new turn is coming soon, another rib like this. So I lengthen those tubes that have become too short. I'm applying Universal Polymeric Adhesive Dragon. 
Cut the tubes at a very sharp angle and connect them like this. And continue working. Well, I believe this tube is worth lengthening too. I try my best to lengthen the tubes at different levels in order to avoid weak points. I'm working with newspaper tubes, that's why there are some dark spots, I cut them off. Mask the point of connection and continue weaving up to the next strip. So, I've woven 7 rows. Let's turn the item over again. I've taken the box away since I don't need it anymore. Perform one more turn. Add one auxiliary tube in order to make finishing easier and create one more rib. I don't get rid of the vacuum tube since I'm going to continue weaving with them. Perform a turn. And continue this way up to the end of the row. Before making the last turn, I've cut the tube tails and tucked them into the weaving. I'm going to show you the way I've done when finishing the work. I've woven seven rows more. Now I'm making one more turn, one more rib. I'm finishing. Leave the working tubes out. Here they are. And continue weaving, directing our working tubes toward inside and pulling them tight at the same time. Continue weaving this way till you run into the base, in case you'd like a sharp turn. If you don't like a sharp turn, you can insert barbecue skewers, direct them toward the bottom and perform a more gradual turn, which will make the item look completely different. I personally prefer clear ribs, that's why I leave the tubes only after I come to the base. I'm close to the finish. It is where I'm going to start uniting tubes of the base in pairs. I've chosen a pattern like this, solid spots. Or you can choose another pattern like this, for example. The optimal weaving technique is two tube rope, because printed cotton weave is not too convenient at the point of widening. While the rope like technique is easy to shape different twists and turns. Perform lengthening very carefully. Unite tubes in couples and try our best to press the tubes downward as thoroughly as you can, especially at the points of transition in order to avoid visible gaps. In this case I don't apply glue. I mention it for newcomers. Experienced weavers have chosen optimal lengthening technique for themselves. Press the tubes this way, uniting them in pairs. Now it's time to finish the work. Previously, when reaching this first layer, I tried uniting both layers. 
However, I've noticed that the women become unsmooth, so I've decided to do without. I finish the internal layer at first, after which I finish the external layer in the same very way. As well, I've tried applying different kinds of edge trimming. However, I believe since the focus is on the volumetric 3D-like top part, no focus on the bottom edge is needed. That's why we just cut the tails and hide them into the row in a very careful way. It is the way we finish the work. So, the work has been finished. As a result, I've got a cash port like this. As I've already mentioned, I've experimented quite a lot before I worked out a shape like this. I've tried making the edge roundish like here with a bigger top part. So as you can see, different options are possible. Besides, you can trim the item with a kind of skirt like this. Sharp and clear edges like uh, this, supplemented with a skirt at the bottom, create another shape option. Here you can see one more experiment, where I've made use of tube remainders. However, I dislike the result I've got. But this experiment has made me realize that I prefer round shape rather than the square one. Anyway, there is enough space for experimenting. I wish you to enjoy the flight of imagination and much variety.